If you watch the channel, you know I've been having a blast with my 10th scale Red Cat Ascent, but now they shrunk it. It is 18th scale Red Cat Ascent. Same core kind of design, but yet in a smaller package. This has the potential to be absolutely one of the best micro crawlers you can get. Let's get it out of the box, check it out, and then give it a test drive. In the box, you get, of course, the truck itself. We'll go into more detail on that here in a minute. You get a somewhat familiar looking. I feel like I've seen this controller before somewhere. I don't know where I've seen it, but a uh, fairly good sized, actually. Um, 2.4 gigahertz controller has our trims, has our dual rates, has our reverses on here. So that does everything that you need. Somewhat basic. Requires four double A's in order to get running, but should do just fine. It's not one of those little micro controllers that sometimes these micro crawlers get. It is a full size controller. In this bag, we get these look to be body mounts so that if you do not want to run the factory body or the flip style, you can put regular style body mounts on the truck. We have a set of stickers uh, that looks a lot like the set of stickers that were for the big vehicle too. That's kind of fun. We have an instruction manual. It looks like a pretty, it just says quick start guide. So it's not a full manual. It's literally only a couple pages here, uh, but it does tell you how to get started with some of the basic things. Then it has a QR code here to the full manual online. And then a USB battery charger. Looks like for a 2S LiPo, but the battery's inside the truck. Let's start looking at that. Definitely a family resemblance here to the tent scale truck. You can definitely tell same kind of design. It definitely mirrors this red body style more. If you remember the tent scale, it had two different body styles, a bluer, more pinched body. Looks like it is mirroring this style right here. Size is definitely smaller as you would expect. Tires. Ooh, those are really soft, actually. That tire compound feels like it might be really, really good. On some plastic glued on tires, bumper body design, it all looks very, very similar. To get the body off, there's a quarter turn little snip right here. Isn't that kind of nice? Little quarter turn, and then the body hinges forward, and we can see in here. Let me see if I can get the body off yep so just like the tent scale you can slide it forward and get the body all the way off we do have a servo on axle which is different than the tent scale so it is there we do still have portal axles on all four corners feels like oil filled shocks so these are not a lot of the times with this scale of crawler you may get a non-oil filled shock that is an oil filled shock right there a small kind of standard motor. It does not give any indication of what turn it is. Little Velcro strap there does hold in. This is a 2S 750 milliamp LiPo. Should be plenty for a vehicle of this size. And then here in the back, it looks like this is a receiver and ESC two in one unit. Comes with this standard plug that you see in a lot of these smaller vehicles. Uh, so channel one must be the steering servo here off to the side. We have a motor lead coming in, and then we do not have anything plugged into channel three. Um, controller does have a fourth channel here and a third channel up here. Third channel does appear to be a three-way switch, so maybe it could actually run a winch or something like that off of it. That would be pretty cool. Overall, this thing's looking pretty good. A lot of weight in the rear of the truck, so that might be something that we can study moving forward. Is is there a way to put a smaller battery maybe way up here up front, move the receiver here up front? What can we do to move some weight forward? That is something that we could certainly investigate, but overall, pretty decent little truck. Now, what I'm curious about is I have some other micro crawlers. Really curious to see how does this compare size-wise versus some of those. Well, there you go. That's an interesting comparison. The new Ascent TRX4 Defender. This is the Furitech Fury FX118 and a modified Axial SEX24. I have all of these vehicles lined up in the center of the front axle. Plus or minus, pretty close here. 
if we look at length, it is the exact wheelbase as the TRX4, which is basically the exact wheelbase of the FX118, just ever so slightly longer there, it looks like. And obviously the SCX24, this started out as the C10 truck, um, still has the C10 links and center skid in it. So this is clearly smaller on the SCX24 side. It's really interesting from a body standpoint, body length. The Fury is just a little bit, just ever so slightly longer than the Ascent body. Is taller, has the roll bar and some of those hoops. It visually looks wider than the truck, but I don't think it really is. Obviously, this TRX4 Defender, massive, just absolutely massive body in comparison. If I line them up right here, Ascent just barely sticks out, just ever so slightly. So it appears that it's slightly wider. And again, same thing basically with the Fury lining them up out here however so slightly wider tires look like they come in right at 60 millimeters tall which is a little bit taller than about the 57 that come here this trx4 does have aftermarket tires on it that put it a little over 60. that's enough of this comparison for now be on the lookout for another video coming out very soon of me comparing these vehicles driving side by side to see which one performs the best for now let's focus on this ascent I'm really interested to give this thing a shot, which means I need to get this battery charged up. One word of warning to you is that this USB charger that's included, it'll work, it'll work great, it'll charge it just nicely, but it's gonna take a while to charge it. If you have a more hobby grade charger, they actually do sell these, I call them the octopus. It's a charging lead with all sorts of ends on it. And then that way, if you use one of those, you can actually do proper storage charge, proper balance charge. So if you are going to get one of these and you do not have a proper hobby grade charger, it's a good opportunity to upgrade while you're at it. I do like here that it is a flat rail chassis, which means that if someone wants to 3D print some alternate chassis for it or make one out of carbon fiber, that would not be ridiculously hard and like a C channel. So the fact that they made it flat rail just like this means grades should be easy for it. Um, but this factory does also have, look, we have multiple shock mounting positions, both front and rear. And I like that there's this plate up here above the front servo. It's like they just know that we want to move the receiver or the battery or something up here up front in order to help us with the weight. I really do like that. I can see myself getting rid of this factory battery mount, putting a small battery right here on the side skids, moving the ESC around all to help with weight balance. Opening up the center transmission here, what we're looking at is a standard 180 size motor here with a 12 tooth pinion, but then look at all of this gear reduction that we have inside this thing. It has all of the gear reduction in this gearbox. Yes, these are plastic gears, but even at launch, there is steel gears that they are gonna offer. So if you do have any kind of issue with these, there's already an upgrade in the works to make it stronger. We do have portal axles on each corner. Corner. And fortunately, those portals do have metal gears inside them. So no need to worry about braking or any kind of issues you may have there. The last good thing to note is that this is also full of ball bearings, whereas some of its key competition that's out there in the market is actually bushings, which is kind of silly in this day and age. Enough talking about this thing. Let's drive it first on some obstacle courses here in my garage. I have these obstacle courses plus some more that I've actually designed and they are available out there on printables for free. So if you want to test your vehicle out on the same obstacles, then you can do that just for a free download and then a print. And then we're going to take the truck outside on my 10 scale crawler course, which usually is a really hard challenge for any of these 18 scale crawlers. We'll see what it can and can't get over out there don't really have very high expectations because almost none of them ever really get over much outside.
I'm not going to lie, that that surprised me a little bit out there. I did not expect that it would do as good as it did. Um, it really tackled some of those gnarly rocks pretty well. Um, I've tested that same kind of course, that same kind of path with SCX24, TRX4M, the FX1018 Fury from Furitech, and this might be the highest performing of the four. I'm gonna have to do some further testing with that. That'll be a future video. Really, it did quite good. Tires might be the stickiest stock tire that you can get. Period. I think that might be the case. The 10th scale version of these is also really, really good. I think they did a good job on the 18th scale. Mirroring the 10th scale really makes a lot of sense here too because really low overhangs on that ascent and the tire literally sticks out beyond the bumper here in the rear. That means that as we were going around, we were not getting hung up on these bumpers at all. That was not an issue, period, hands down. No issue with that whatsoever. It was really, really nice. The tires are unshrouded. There's not a big body hanging over them or anything like that. So really easy to get the tire onto an obstacle. High clearance here on the side, so it wasn't getting hung up on the belly a lot. I'd say the one thing that I really did notice is that as it went up and over, if that if that rear tire caught at all, it was it was over. Um, it was just there was not enough weight on the front, not enough of this truck is driving through the front end for it to not just absolutely flip this thing over every chance that it got. I'm really curious. I'm going to get my scales out and weigh this thing with the battery in it. I am guessing we have a pretty fairly even weight balance here and we need to get some of that weight to the front. Just as we might have expected, 50% weight bias front and rear and side to side. The thing's just balanced. Look at that. Obviously we're talking about some rounding area here. 221 one grams on the front 217 on the rear 438 total grams that's with the battery in the truck so we're going to really have to do some work to get some of that weight to the front off of that rear axle let this front do some more of that work and get that weight balance better i think that will help a lot the price of this thing is also very interesting. So $119.99, so $120 is what we're really talking about here, which puts it pretty noticeably cheaper than the TRX4M, somewhere in the ballpark of an SCX24, so much bigger size for the same kind of money. But yet you get ball bearings and oil-filled shocks. It seems like a pretty dang good deal, if I'm honest. And then Red Cat's telling me that because they're late to the uh, small scale crawler game, they're going to actually introduce these at $99.99 for the first, like, however long. That's pretty wild. $100 for this? That's, that is like the best deal in RC out there right now. The last piece of this puzzle is a lot of times when new vehicles come out, it takes a while for the aftermarket to get there. And sometimes you're concerned, like, is the aftermarket even going to do anything at all? Red Cat kind of solved that. So as they sent these trucks out, they also sent all of the upgrade parts. These are going to be available the day that this thing launches. You have brass servo mounts, we have brass knuckles, portal covers, we have brass and aluminum steering links, we have different hexes, steel gears to go in the transmission, we have different, these are steering links, we have also suspension, front and rear suspension links, both in aluminum and in brass, diff covers, shock bodies so that you can upgrade the shocks, even center skids that are either aluminum or brass, and a metal servo horn. What? Metal servo horn on small scale? Call, count me in for that one. So even as of day one, if you are curious about upgrading your Red Cat Ascent, you can literally buy whatever parts you want to go with it. So now you know there's going to be more videos of me coming, testing out this truck. I clearly need to put it up head-to-head -head versus my TRX4M and my FX118 Fury from Furitech to see which one of these 18th scale really is best. So be on the lookout for that. Plus, you know i got to install all these parts, man. You know I'm going to be out there showing you how to install each one of these and which one, between the aluminum and the brass, I think is the right choice for each each one of these upgrade parts. So more to come on that. If you are curious to see any of that stuff, come right over here. There is a Red Cat Ascent 18 playlist that'll be popping up to your right. Check it out. Some of those videos will be there. And as I continue to make them, they'll continue to pop in there. So thank you for watching and goodbye.